covering the topic Winter Olympics. Very timely. All right. Thank you, Karen. And you all thought I was going to do Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I want to let you know I did not filch this topic. <laughs> yes, you did. It was given to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about the Winter Olympics today. Who has been watching it this week? Only the results. <laughs> anyway, so we have seven questions here. So if you want to come up and pick a question, and I'll read you your question, and you can have your answer. Remember, one to two minutes. One minute as you get the green light, two minutes you get the red light. We all know the rules. So who wants to come up and pick a number? I'll do it. Lucky number, but I keep losing on it. So I'll turn again. Yeah, it one through seven. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I wasn't. I was writing your comment. Uh, three. Okay. Number three. three Tell us about your la the last time you were in a snow in the snow and had a snowball fight. Who were you with and what were you doing? Or you can always bring oh, it up and think of something one. else. Uh, snowball fight. The last time I was in a snowball fight, we don't get a lot of snow here, unfortunately. You know, I was just I was talking to people from Canada yesterday, and as much as I would hate to shovel the snow, I mean, it's kind of sad that we get man-made snow mostly here. <laughs> and even in Sochi, they were making their snow and the runs and the yeah. But I went to Big Bear, and my girlfriend's parents have a cabin out there, and my boyfriend and and. I think it was my mom and my sister, my girlfriend, her daughter, and her husband all went. And behind, they've got this big valley that we can go down and sled and stuff and make a little runway. So we would go and we'd hide, and people can come out to the patio around the, the, the cabin, and you can't really see down the, the valley unless you look over. So we would go down there and we'd hide and we'd make a bunch of snowballs, and as soon as people would come out, you know, to enjoy their coffee in the morning or whatever. <laughs> A little POW! Good morning! <laughs> so I don't know if it was a fight, more of an attack on my part, but <laughs> I didn't really give him an opportunity to fight back. Uh, but that is the last snowball fight I've been at. I haven't been in many. I need to do more. But that is my last. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Alright, next. You can answer that question or I have another <coughs> question you can answer. Alright, Stephanie. Two. Number two. What winter activities do you enjoy the most? Well, that's easy. Mm -hmm. I like to snowboard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited. In two weeks, I get to go to Whistler for the first oh. time. Oh! <laughs> and I'm going for over a week. I'm going to Whistler and then Tahoe back to back. So I'm very excited about that. And I was just in Jackson Hole two weekends ago, and it was incredible. I highly recommend it for anyone who really likes snow sports, skiing, or snowboarding. It's a pretty steep mountain, but it's really fun, and we got awesome snow. And it's a really fun town there, too. They have lots of, like, kind of like western ski village meets each other. So they have, like, their famous bars, like the Cowboy Bar, and you're literally sitting on saddles at the bar, which is pretty fun. <laughs> Uh, it's, a, it's a great place, but yeah, I just love snowboarding. Growing up, I always did with my family, and it's just such a, I feel like it's just time in a cabin together as a family. such a unique time. You always play charades and cook dinners as a group, and you're kind of all stuck up there, and there's usually nothing on TV except for, like, random ski uh, sport, like, shows and stuff, which are fun to watch. Um, so I, I think it's a great time. It's Unfortunately, a pretty pricey sport, so I know a lot of people, it's hard to take like a family of four to be ridiculously expensive. But the snow was really bad at Mammoth this year, so they had really good deals going on until the last storm. They had like buy one, get one free, and all children were free for the rest of the season, I think. And so, yeah, I recommend this. <laughs> <a lot. laughs> My favorite winter sport. Uh, sitting up by a fire and having a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like being cold. Where do you get in person? So, we have some more. Pick a number. Or you can answer the one question. Come on up. I'm looking too small. Oh, okay. Here we go. 
All right, if you can be an Olympic athlete, what sport would you compete in? And, ha and tell us your journey about becoming that athlete, too. <laughs> well, that, well, I think I would select downhill uh, speed uh, skiing. But I can totally tell you, and I, I can totally imagine how my journey would be. Uh, but before talking about journey, uh, let me tell you an incident that happened to me. I think uh, I, I previously worked for a company called Oakley. They are big into like you know eyewear products and more into sport. So they have a company in Sun Valley, Idaho, which is another great skiing place. So they sent me there for a project. I went there, and all those folks there in lunch they go on the mountain. It's mm -hmm. probably 2,000 uh, feet slow. In lunch they they board on the lift and and ski. So they took me there. And they have like deadliest, and, and I'm from a hot country. <laughs> I never knew how to ski. <laughs> so I went there, they took me there, and they said, okay, come on, these are the instructions, and started. I did pretty well for the first few times. They said, I started feeling like Sean White, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was my fourth turn, and, and uh, it's something called a, as a dollar, uh, dollar slope, like for kids. <laughs> and I tumbled across, and I, I broke my rotator. Oh. So it was really <coughs> bad. Uh, uh, needless to say, the goal life was seriously jeopardized <laughs> for which I was there. My shoulder was uh, out of shape. I couldn't drive for two months. Oh, no. But I'm set to be a um, great <laughs> Olympian. <laughs> <laughs> Next Olympics, I will be there. Right. Uh, watch this guy. Uh, I, I always thought if I was going to be in the Olympics, I'd, I'd be in speed skating. I don't know why. I think that's just so neat watching them, but the outfits? <laughs> I think I'd need to lose another person before I could fit in one of those. I don't know. So let's go. We got uh, four more left to pick from, or you can answer them. Right. Okay, here, come on up. Uh, four, five, six, and seven. Everything's going wrong. Okay, number six. I have two tickets to the Sochi Olympics for you. Yeah. All right. Which events would you like to see, and who would you take on this trip? Mm -hmm. First, it'd be questionable if I went because you can't drink the water there, right? <laughs> 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 but if I did decide to go, I think the events is all the slope style with the skiing and the snowboarding, going down the different rails. I think those are new events this year, and pretty mm -hmm. pretty exciting to watch, right? Um, it's it's quite different. It looks like. People got injured this time around. I think mm -hmm. Sean White got injured and mm -hmm. kind of hurt his chances in the half bike. Um, if I could take anybody, I guess, who would I take? I would want to say my wife, but I don't oh. think she would enjoy it. <laughs> 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 so probably my dad. He, he watches it every night. So I would take him with me so he can enjoy it. Great. I went, um, I just was reading an article today online about the Sochi Olympics, and basically it's, they're actually not held in Sochi at all. They're actually held in another um, city called Alder, mm -hmm. and sadly, a lot of the, everything is like boarded up that you can't see. It's kind of like, it's almost like uh, Wizard of Oz, and it's like big buildings, and then there's the wizard behind going, ha ha, it's not really. So it's it really interesting. So if you go to Yahoo, check out the um, the Missing Olympics uh, link on there. It's really interesting to see. Yeah. All right. It's one of the warmest towns they have in Russia. Yeah. yeah. Was like, and that's mm -hmm. why they have to keep making that man mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really it's it, it all the places. It's really play. interesting. Yeah. It's because Putin beach home. Well, we got three more left. Uh, we got a few there. more minutes. All right. Uh, four, five, or seven, or you can ask for another one. I will take seven. Seven. <laughs> the official mascots for the Winter Olympics are a polar bear, a hare, and a leopard. Here's a picture. Okay. If you were in charge of picking the mascots for the next Olympics, what would you pick and why? Remember, they have to be extra creepy. <laughs> That's a rule. <laughs> a rule. Sure, thank you. Thank you for the toughest topic ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm taking a big gamble for, to be up here because I don't watch TV nor do I read the news. So I don't know much about the Winter Olympics, but I do 
Uh, this year's mascots are the hare, the polar bear, and is that a fox? Which one of you reminds me of this joke that I have? Um, a bear and a, a uh, rabbit <laughs> were pooping in the woods, and uh, the, the, the hare looks at the the rab uh, the hare looks at the, the, the polar bear and says, "Mr. Bear." When you poop, the, the, the poop gets stuck on your fur, <laughs> and uh, you know I, it happens to me all the time. I don't know how to get rid of it. So the so the polar bear looks at the rabbit and grabs him. I didn't mean the objective. <laughs> Have you ever lived in a snowy place? And when or where and what was your ever your coldest experience? Sure. Oh, here we go. Right. <laughs> He's got notes already. No, that was with something. <laughs> <laughs> so how I ever lived it anywhere where it is cold. So I have a twin brother who looks like me. Oh, so if he, if he happens to be here, he may get spooked because he just looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> so he lives in Canada in a province called Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. It gets 40 below zero regularly. So in December on 07, I was there during Christmas time, and it was 40 below zero. I had five layers of clothes, and still I couldn't spend more than five minutes on because it gets so cold. And when you walk, you walk with your shoulders tucked in and your hands like this because it's so cold. You're trying to reduce the exposure. And you can barely walk 10 minutes and your shoulders will start get hurting. And the other thing is, you walk in a snow because it's so cold and it's knee deep snow. You're walking like this, digging your foot in from the parking lot to the apartment or to the store if it is not, there's no walkway. And it gets so cold that you literally freeze. The another incident that happened not to me but to a friend of mine, he was in Minnesota up north. He had his eye lenses on. He went out. Oh, no. And because it was so cold, the moisture dried out and the eye lens is stuck on the eye box. Oh. Oh. So he couldn't remove his eyes. <laughs> he has to come in in the house, warm himself for like 20 minutes or so before the, before the, there was more moisture and it took oh. him out. Oh. So it, there are other instances where it gets so cold that you get snow bite and you don't even realize. And if you move your hand, you may have your ear in your hand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And an interesting incident happened to my brother last year. He was in his house getting ready to go to work. It was like 4 or 5 in the morning. He wanted to check how the wind is so he can dress appropriately. He opened the back door of his house just to peek how the wind is. And because the wind was so high, so so it was blowing at such a speed that the doors were closed. The good thing was that he was literally out in the back in the balcony oh, yeah. and nothing got stuck. The bad thing was nobody was at home. He didn't have a cell phone with him. The door was jammed, and he didn't. He was only in his pajamas. Oh, oh. Yeah. He tried for about ten minutes just to open the door. It didn't work. There was a six. I think it was a six feet side wall that he had. So he climbed over the wall, walked to a neighbor's house. Few. Mm -hmm. I think it was a block away. A few houses down the street. Woke them at five in the morning, so that they so he can get in. And then he got a hot water with a bucket and he put his he uh, put his feet yeah. in because he didn't have anything other than sleepers <coughs> and, a, and a t shirt and a pajamas. Oh, no. So it could be it could be life threatening at times if you don't pay attention. So from that onwards he started having one key <laughs> in the garage or <laughs> he hid somewhere outside the house and he will never look out without his cell phone on. <laughs> <laughs> because he could not call nine one one, there was no cab, it was pitch night. It was like four in the morning, he works at five sh five shift, at five o'clock shift. It was so hard for him to find anybody. And we were talking, my mom happened, my mom was not there, but if we were thinking if my mom would have been in that situation, she, it would have been hard for her, her to even climb the wall. Yeah. And she might have been frozen. So wow. it gets, it gets me a good. Right? 
Wow. I'd give you a new definition of lend me your ear. No. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. Anyway, that wraps up for the Winter Olympics. I give everybody a goal. <laughs> and uh, congratulations. And back to